Hello, and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. We've never met before, right? Yes, Tom Cruise is back, and he's taking on his most impossible mission yet to try and follow the previous Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, which was easily the best movie in the series. Now, can he possibly top that masterpiece of four years ago? Pfft, come on, that really would be impossible. But he does get really, really close, and in the process delivers perhaps the best action movie of this year. I mean, gun to my head, I may have to go with Mad Max, but let's not split hairs. This late in the summer, it's surprising to be handed such a glowing reminder of why we go to action movies. But here it is. I choose to accept it. And now let's get in depth. Each Mission Impossible movie is unique in that they are all helmed by directors that are either legendary to start with or became legendary afterwards. Brian De Palma, John Woo, Brad Bird, legendary. They had all cut their teeth on amazing masterpieces before Mission Impossible. However, Mission Impossible 3 had a first time director at the helm by the name of J.J. Abrams. And well, I think we can all agree that he has reached celestial status by now in his career. <laughs> anyway, Christopher McQuarrie, the director of Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, is an Oscar-winning writer, to be sure, but his directorial career thus far has given no indication that he was even capable of such well-staged and paced action scenes. No, not even Jack Reacher could prepare you for the hair-raising thrills in this film, including a sequence set during an opera that brings to mind Hitchcock and De Palma with its slowly building intensity. This whole movie is intense, from its typical Mission Impossible twisty turny plot to its sexy double agent that redefines the words femme fatale, this movie keeps you guessing. And let me tell you, what a snow job they have pulled off with the marketing of this film. It has been sold on the iconic grandeur of just one scene. You know the one, where Tom Cruise hangs onto a plane as it takes off. I know you've seen it, but here it is again. So you would think that that scene is the climax of this film. But no! It happens literally before the opening credits. The entire movie's worth of action that follows has only been hinted at in the trailer. And that means that you can focus on the plot and be surprised when the action scenes occur organically instead of just waiting for them to happen. In fact, there literally was a moment in this movie where I felt the climax of the movie approaching and I thought to myself, okay, hmm, we're headed into act three. What's the finale going to be? And I started scrolling through the scenes from the trailer. Hmm, motorcycles, check. Opera house, check. Airplane. And I realized that I'd seen all the action scenes that occurred in the trailer already. As a result, I had no idea what was coming up at the end of the movie. Now, that sounds simple and like, duh, but imagine how rare that is in this day and age. And that ending, well, it's a sequence that doesn't play out with a bunch of flashy stunt work like the rest of the movie, but brings the tension to a boil and ends with a moment that could have been cheesy, but makes it so cool, so note perfect, and such a great middle finger to the bad guy, it's more satisfying than any climactic explosion could have been in its place. And let's talk about that bad guy. Now, the Mission Impossible series has had some good ones, Philip Seymour Hoffman being my personal favorite. But this movie has a villain that I passionately hated from the moment he appeared on screen. How does that happen? Well. It doesn't really have anything to do with the way he was written or acted by Sean Harris. It's really because, in a bizarre coincidence, I had been looking at this face all week long. This is Walter James Palmer, and he has been in the news a lot this week. He's an American dentist who allegedly killed a lion in Zimbabwe illegally 
He has been vilified in the media, and some would argue that he is the most hated man in America right now. So then, when Sean Harris pops up in this movie, his eyes bugging out in twisted fury, BAM! You despise him. Immediately. And maybe you don't even consciously know why. Well, I'm here to tell you, this is why. Paramount would have had no idea that the movie they shot a year ago would have a villain that just happened to resemble the most hated man in America on the very week of its release. Man, what a lucky break. Now, hold on. I'm not going to be a jerk here and say that the tragic story out of Zimbabwe last week was good for anyone. Not for Paramount, not for the hunter, and certainly not for the lion. But it is remarkable how it allowed a tiny layer of subtext to creep into my overall feelings about the villain and enhance my enjoyment of the film. What are you going to do? There's also another aspect that creeps into this film that isn't in the other films, but it is absolutely welcome, and that is that the members of the IMF team display heartfelt affection for each other. It's minor, but it's there in a way that really hasn't been there before. Ethan Hunt, Tom Cruise's character, has always been a lone wolf, a generic action guy, a blank slate to literally wear whatever mask the story requires of him at any given moment. But slowly and over time, he's been building solid friendships with the members of his team to the point that when their backs are against the wall, you can see the real emotional pull that these guys get to risk their lives, not for the mission, but for each other. And that brings a level of depth to the relationships of this movie, and I hope it continues in future Mission Impossible movies. That's right, future Mission Impossible movies. I want more of these. They could make a dozen more of these things right now, and I'd be fine with that. I award Mission Impossible Rogue Nation an extra large bag of popcorn. This film is literally stuffed with action and tension and good solid fun. Bring your appetite for thrills and prepare to chow down. All right, that does it for Movies That Pop. Don't forget to click thumbs up when you liked what you saw and also don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss a review. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or wish to make a request that I review one of your favorite movies, leave it in the comments below. That's it for Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. This message will self-destruct in 5, 4, 3, 2, bye!